since while supporting beneficial electrification, all while paying close attention to affordability and the impact on ratepayers. I'm thrilled that we're going to be able to kick off um, this uh, Grid Connects with remarks from the woman who's overseeing perhaps the greatest investment of federal funding for grid modernization in the history of the federal government. So Maria Robinson um, leads the new Grid Deployment Office at the Department of Energy. Before coming to DOE, she was elected to the Massachusetts House of Representatives. She was also faculty at Tufts University School of Urban Planning and Environmental Policy. And when I first ran into Maria, she was running the Advanced Energy Economies Wholesale Markets Program. She holds a degree in chemical engineering from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and a law degree from the University of Oklahoma. So please join me in welcoming Maria Robinson to the Grid Connect stage. Thank you, Karen, and thank you to everyone here. It's so lovely to be back at in-person events and seeing everyone. Uh, it's the kinds of connections that we get to make here are just uh, completely invaluable and so wonderful to, to meet those of you. And for those of you who have heard my spiel multiple times, uh, you can feel free to you know write a couple emails during this period of time. But uh, I think our office is still relatively new and something that we're trying to continue to, to socialize all, all the information about the many billions of dollars that we have to, to upgrade the grid. So again, my name is Maria Robinson, and I'm the director of the Grid Deployment Office, which is one of the many new offices here at the Department of Energy. And so thank you to everyone here at the GridWise Alliance and, and to all the supporters of, of Grid Connects for hosting um, this really important conference. Um, we just want to make sure that there are all these opportunities to convene policymakers, all the leading companies in the industry, and, and lots of good grid experts, or as I like to call them, all of our grid nerds, um, to discuss all the innovations happening uh, in enabling the transition to, clean, uh, to the clean economy. And recognizing that the historic opportunity we have today to build energy infrastructure, and of course all of the challenges, including some of the challenges faced this weekend, um, facing our country to achieve our goals, it's, it's really an honor to speak with you today. Um, before getting into a little bit more about the Grid Deployment Office and what we're working on, I, I first want to provide a little bit of context on how far we've come in, in such a short period of time, and, and thanks to many of you here in this room as well. Um, in the less than two years since President Biden was sworn into office, the United States has taken a global, global leadership role on clean energy deployment. Upon taking office, President Biden set ambitious climate goals of reducing uh, U.S. emissions by at least 50 percent below 2005 levels by 2030 and reaching net zero emissions by 2050, which is coming up soon. Uh, to reach these goals, we need to make our country's power sector 100 percent clean by 2035. And these are ambitious goals, which is why if you ever hear Secretary Granholm speak, you will hear her use the phrase deploy, deploy, deploy over and over again. And so the Department of Energy here is hard at work to invest in clean energy solutions across the United States and the world. And fortunately, of course, uh, the President and Congress passed an aggressive legislative agenda to help meet these goals and ensure that we can deploy clean energy solutions rapidly to ensure reliable, affordable, and resilient grid for all Americans. In particular, of course, the bipartisan infrastructure law makes the largest long-term investment in our nation's infrastructure in nearly a century, while the Inflation Reduction Act breathes life into our clean energy economy by incentivizing the deployment of clean technologies and lowering energy costs for American families. Despite all this incredible progress that we've made, we are aware of the challenges ahead to ensure that we have a clean energy future. And as we've seen time and time again, the grid is increasingly at risk, whether it's from severe weather events or cyber attacks or physical attacks. The historic investments from the bipartisan infrastructure law led the department to reorganize itself to include de deployment of energy and infrastructure in addition to its core longstanding mission of R&D. And that decision led to the realignment of several offices as well as the creation of several new offices, including ours, the grid deployment office. Uh, the department has over $60 billion available for states, tribal nations, territories, and private industry partners to make investments across the country to upgrade our infrastructure. At the Grid Deployment Office, we know that these investments are impossible without partnering with our public and private sector colleagues to ensure that we're maximizing regional and community benefits, including meeting the administration's Justice 40 goals. 
This necessary partnership is why I'm particularly honored to be here today to talk to this group to outline some of the grid and transmission financing opportunities available and, and how our office can work with you. At GDO here, we're charged with overseeing three main program divisions, which are critical to grid reliability, affordability, and resilience. Um, these program divisions are separated out between power generation assistance, transmission, and, and grid modernization. And while I'll spend the bulk of my comments today talking about transmission and grid modernization, obviously, uh, I do want to mention our power generation assistance work. It's, it's vital in achieving the administration's goals while maintaining reliability. Um, it focuses on maintaining and investing in critical generation facilities, like specifically hydroelectric and uh, nuclear power plants. We do oversee the $6 billion civil nuclear credit program that prevents the premature retirement of nuclear plants. And you might have seen our conditional award uh, in a one, up to $1.1 billion in credits to Diablo Canyon uh, out in California that was announced a couple of weeks back. This division also oversees about $700 million in incentives uh, to improve in existing hydroelectric facilities, including ways in which they can provide grid stability and reliability. And, we believe that the support from these programs is really key to ensuring that we get to 100% clean electricity future, as well as improving grid reliability as a whole. But for today's discussion, I want to emphasize the work that's going on in our transmission and grid modernization divisions. Um, well, some might frame some of these as focusing in one technology, either more in the distribution or the transmission side. We know that these two technologies need to work in harmony, and we really want to stress the importance of having a balanced portfolio that includes transmission, distribution, large-scale gen generation, of course, distributed energy investments to help achieve our larger reliability and affordability and resilience goals. And so that full suite of energy technologies is really necessary for us uh, in order to ensure that we are providing that low cost and reliable power. So back in January, which now feels ages ago, uh, the department launched the Building a Better Grid initiative to capture the entirety of the department's efforts around grid transmission projects and upgrades. And this initiative really focused on collaborating with key stakeholders like yourselves, as well as states and tribal nations, environmental groups, and others, so that projects can meet local needs and provide community benefits. We also wanted to focus on enhancing transmission planning to identify areas of high priority needs while conducting longer term national scale transmission planning analysis. I think many of the folks here in this room are involved in some of those long term studies that we're doing either in the, um, now we call it the needs study, used to call it the congestion study or, or the larger national study. We also are trying to leverage DOE's cutting edge analytical tools and technology expertise to help meet local goals and help advance smart, efficient transmission projects. Uh, we're also obviously doing a lot of financing of distribution and transmission projects through the deployment of more than $20 billion in federal financing tools. Um, and finally, one of the goals is to facilitate an efficient transmission permitting process by coordinating with federal agencies on permitting, which is something is very important to um, ensuring that we have the grid build out that we need. And I can say is something that I know the secretary uh, has, is very personally invested in as well. So we've organized within our own office, the transmission and grid modernization divisions um, to help implement this overall initiative. And so our transmission division, uh, led by our good friend, Jeff Dennis, for those of you who know him, he just recently came over to, to work for us and honored to have him, uh, works to ensure that we have the necessary transmission infrastructure to unlock that clean energy future. Recent reports have found that we'll need to expand transmission systems by 60% of existing by 2030 and may need to triple our existing systems by 2050 to meet our growing clean electricity demands. That's right, I said triple, which is uh, quite the challenge. Uh, so investing in transmission, of course, creates broad benefits um, to supporting the development of renewable energy and of course storage projects and DERs um, while lowering costs for households and businesses 
But at the same time, we're facing aging infrastructure with the vast majority of our transmission and, and power transformers. Uh, about 70% of that infrastructure is over 25 years old. Um, and so we're working with our partners at the national labs to model the needs for our transmission system and, and using these new financing tools to help upgrade and modernize the system. Um, we must ensure that we are properly planning that, again, through these two studies, the NEED study and the National Transmission uh, Planning Study, to identify both what capacity we need in, in the short term as well as the much longer term. Um, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law and the Inflation Reduction Act, we call them inside DOE, we call them Uncle Bill and Uncle Ira. That's sort of our thing. Um, <laughs> we've created uh, some notable financial instruments to really help with this development of transmission and, and they're first of their kind programs in, in many cases. Um, as many of you might be aware, we had a very busy November. I'm so glad we're now into December where we announced the first solicitation uh, for our transmission facilitation program, which is a permanent program of a $2.5 billion revolving loan fund. Um, the TFP is going to help build out new interregional transmission lines across the country, and it's going to provide federal support to overcome some of the financial hurdles uh, that developing large-scale new transmission lines and an upgrade of existing transmission lines, as well as uh, connection of microgrids in certain states and in US territories. In addition, we also have the Inflation Reduction Act tools, including $2 billion of the Transmission Facility Financing Program, and another $760 million in grants to facilitate the siting, which is very important, of interstate transmission lines. And you can anticipate an RFI in the relatively near future, we'll say, um, that, that will be coming out. That, that's just for all of you so, to, to let you know. Um, we do have other tools as well that focus more on grid modernization and, and across the entirety of the grid. Um, so that program and that division currently is working with states, tribal nations, and territories to provide grants for grid resilience totaling about $2.5 billion over the next five years. Um, these investments aim at hardening the grid to reduce the likelihood and consequences of disruptive events. And for those of you who are working with your states already, we really appreciate that. I know several of them are in the process of doing their own RFIs and RFPs for different projects through that formula funding. And if you're not currently uh, checking in with those states, I, I highly encourage you to do that because there's a lot of opportunity there and many of them are thinking incredibly creatively about what they want to do with that particular funding. As part of our busy November of announcements, we also opened up a $10.5 billion program in competitive grants and financial assistance that will accelerate the deployment of transformative projects that will ensure the reliability of the power sector's infrastructure through what we call the Grid Resilience and Innovation Partnerships Program. We call it GRIP for short. Um, so that's a joint offering of about three different programs, uh, all of which are competitive funding opportunities. And we released it as a joint uh, offering in order to encourage both states and industry to think comprehensively about grid modernization. Um, the first topic area is competitive grants for industry, so primarily utilities, but also generation assets um, on grid resilience. The second area is the Smart Grid Innovation Grants, which was reestablished, refunded, and expanded uh, from the 2009 ARRA version, uh, which now includes additional eligibility for investments, including increasing capacity in transmission through uh, GETs or you know, using dynamic line rating, advanced conductors, uh, all sorts of exciting technologies, network topology optimization. Uh, to improve system efficiency and reliability. It's not just meters anymore. We're now in 2022 and we're talking about uh, much more advanced technologies. Um, and lastly, the Grid Innovation Program, uh, which is vaguely named and vaguely defined in legislation, uh, offers federal financial assistance to support innovative uh, approaches to transmission capacity, advanced distribution uh, of grid assets, and combined um, transmission and distribution systems, as well as storage. Um, as I'm sure many here are aware, we're fast approaching the deadline for those concept papers for uh, the Grid Resilience Utility and the Smart Grid uh, grants on December 16th. 
Um, I know that we've heard plenty of feedback from potential applicants, and we, I promise you there are real live people behind every single email that's listed on our website, and we are getting back to you um, as quickly as we possibly can. Um, you know, Congress has charged us with implementing these programs effectively and efficiently, and we are working 24-7 to make sure that that is as easy as possible for applications to roll in while moving as quickly as we can to build important energy infrastructure projects uh, across the country. Um, just want to just want to mention, of course, you know, as I'm getting questions here or, or walking out the door, you know, we can only communicate public information, of course, uh, uh, while we have all these open solicitations going on. So, of course, as extreme weather and other devastating events hit every state and territory across the country, we must have the right infrastructure in place to withstand these events. Um, hardening our transmission and distribution systems is, is so important. We need to keep the lights on and uh, for American families and make sure that the grid is resilient against these 21st century threats. Um, at the same time, you know, the department is really taking seriously the administration's Justice 40 initiative um, as we talk about each and every one of these financial opportunities. Um, the initiative, for those who may not be familiar, states that 40% of the overall benefits of certain federal investments will flow to disadvantaged communities and the projects will have minimal negative impact on communities with environmental justice concerns. And so as eligible entities are out there reviewing potential applications to these programs, you know, the Grid Deployment Office, the Department of Energy as a whole, we're reviewing all of our applications and all of our processes and, and programs with this in mind to ensure that all of our investments are really maximizing regional and community benefits and, and that folks are thinking about Justice 40 as a part of this plan. And this is so important in our community, um, not necessarily something we've always been thinking about top of mind when we're making investments in the grid, but it's something that we need to continue to do moving forward. Lastly, and we're getting near the end, I promise, and then we'll, we'll move on to some questions. Um, while we're focused on deploying these historic investments, we know we cannot do it alone as the department. We're actively working collaboratively with Congress, with states, uh, with local governments, uh, private industry, and all sorts of stakeholders to make these critical investments. And we truly, truly welcome all of your feedback on our work and how we can best make these investments to help communities across America. Um, I would be remiss to not put in a plug that we also want more folks to join our team over here at the Department of Energy. As many know, on my first day about four months ago, there were seven of us. Uh, we are now well over 50, which for federal hiring is about as fast as you can possibly go. Um, and we are continuing to, to expand uh, the work that we're doing uh, every, each and every day. It seems like we have some sort of new initiative going on. And so it's an exciting time to get involved in, in government work, I will say. Um, so please take a look at the Clean Energy Corps, uh, which is our, our overall portal for uh, hiring at the department to help us reach all of our ambitious goals. So again, thank you to the Gridwise Alliance and, and everyone here. Um, we look forward to working with all of you uh, moving forward to deploy clean energy solutions that provide reliable and affordable energy for all Americans. So thank you so much. I think you have time for a couple questions, but I'm going to throw one out to start with. As you know, uh, Gridwise Alliance um, began in 2003 in very close coordination with the Department of Energy to help provide insights into the department's um, smart grid initiatives. And um, we've continued to do that over the last 18 or so years. And last Grid Connects, we had a workshop with DOE's general counsel, with a number of the, the um, leaders back then, and we said, you know, as much as our members would like to um, access the funding, we also want to be a resource to the Department of Energy. And so we asked uh, DOE last year at Grid Connects, what, what can we do to help you to help inform your work? And that um, Pat Hoffman asked us, you know, what are the near-term technologies that we need to be thinking about to support transportation electrification? And as a result of that question, we pulled together a working group and put out a paper on the near-term grid investments for to support accelerated transportation electrification. So as you've you know, been at DOE for four months and you're thinking about, you know, as much as we have questions for you, or is there a question that you might have for us that we can kind of pull together and provide some insights back to you that would be useful? Sure. So the thing that keeps me up at night, and I suspect keeps 
a lot of people in this room up at night mm -hmm. right now is supply chain and how we're addressing some of those concerns and what we can do holistically as an industry to make investments now while continuing to do some of these longer term investments in American manufacturing that we know the administration has has started to do. But at the same time, there's a lot we need to do in the next five years and can't necessarily wait for new factories to grow and, and for, for new investments to be made during that period of time. So any of those short term related um, ideas, we're very excited to hear about those. And I know that there are lots of technologies represented by folks here in the room that can help address some of those concerns. And uh, we're looking at figuring out ways to to work around this historic shortage that we have in whether it's distribution transformers or of course the um, certain large scale transformers as well, but hearing hearing about concerns. And, and those are the kinds of things that we would love to hear more about so that we can work with our partners at the Department of Commerce or, or elsewhere within the federal government to see what we can do as an industry to help ease uh, some, of, some of those uh, massive shortages that folks are facing. And we'll we'll get to on that, um, and we did we did um, reply to the yes. RFI on that. So Excellent. okay, questions for Maria, recognizing that she has a limit to what she can say about money that is currently out in for FOAS. But Lee, yes, you you mentioned a number of opportunities. Is there a site a website to go to where they're all described and they can be reviewed? Because you went through them pretty quick. Lee, it's like I planted you here <laughs> with this question. Um, maybe this room, maybe, is this the room that's actually going to laugh at my joke? Um, we'll see. So we've developed a program, and it's a website, but also has um, some interactive functionality within it. It's called the Grid and Transmission Conductor Program, because I thought that was cute. <laughs> um, but essentially, it is a concierge-type program where we walk you through all the different programs. Um, if you have projects or you're not really sure in future iterations of, of funding where you might want to go, we're happy to sit down and walk you through all of these and talk through it. Our goal is to maximize this funding and make sure it's going to the right projects and going to as, you know, an, a number of different investments. So we want to spend that time with industry explaining it. But um, the conductor website has a lot of information. Our goal is also at some point in time to at least link to some of the other non-Department of Energy related funding. Of course, I'm sure folks here are aware USDA, DOI, EPA all have uh, grid related funding moving forward and there isn't uh, the same sort of clearinghouse the way that we have um, for all the different department related uh, programs around grid and transmission. So our, our hope is to continue to work with our other government partners and really have more of a one-stop shopping um, experience for folks. And we, we, would, we would welcome the connection to commerce too, given all the money for broadband and middle mile, which yes. is so critical and is gonna be part of our next discussion. So other questions for Maria? Mark. Uh, given the congestion between the east and west grids, has there been any consideration of funding the upgrade of the ACDC ties across the system? We are desperately hoping that there are some folks who might have some proposals uh, relating to ACDC ties at, at some point in time, uh, recognizing that, that that is of utmost importance between those. But we continue to, um, amongst the many different small smaller not small, but smaller pots of money around uh, the in, uh, Inflation Reduction Act. We did get some funding around long-term planning of interregional transmission as well as offshore wind-related transmission. And so we know that there are some groups working on this. I, I always point to JTIQ uh, between MISO and SBP and the, and the work that's happening there. Um, but whatever we can do to continue supporting planning efforts, I recognize that Cost allocation is not just a hardware related issue, it is sometimes a planning study related issue and if the department uh, helping to fund future studies makes that process easier, we would be more than happy to, to chip in. Um, so that, that's an area where I continue to offer to folks, especially if you're working um, in between major seams and areas of congestion, um, we'd be happy to, to work uh, collectively with you and your, and your peers uh, to set something up or or to help to fund it. Great. I think we've got time for one more question. Well, 
Wow. Yeah, Larry. <laughs> she, you know what she didn't say, actually, it would make, drive more questions, is that of the money that DOE got, the grid deployment office got the most money. Yeah. So yes. we have about a third. Yeah, yes. about a third of the money. Marie, you mentioned uh, expanding transmission 60% by 2030, which um, I think the best region in the nation now does for new transmission about 10 years of permitting time. Um, maybe describe for us, you know, because in the West at least, um, the forestry, uh, federal forest lands, BLM, have the majority of properties where transmission, existing transmission runs across. Is there ways to accelerate permitting for rebuilding, uh, upgrading those particular lines? That might be our fastest way to get to some percentage by 2030. You know, we're exploring a lot of different ways to accelerate the permitting process. Um, the first and foremost way is if any of you have projects relating to federal permitting and you're waiting on a federal permit from some other department, uh, we are very happy to make calls and be annoying on your behalf. Uh, we'll say this is, again, something that I think is imp very important to the secretary is figuring out how we reduce that time. And sometimes it's just making the right phone call and, and wiggling this this over here uh, to ensure that that happens. But we're, we're also trying to look at other ways that we might be able to formalize options. Um, certainly, we're, we're hoping Congress uh, might come up with something before the end of this year as well. Um, but even beyond that, we, we're exploring a lot of different opportunities there. So if you have thoughts, um, we already have some meetings with, with I think, folks in this room, as I look around, uh, set up to talk about ways in which the department might be able to be helpful on permitting. So please feel free to reach out if there are things that you think that we can be doing uh, to help accelerate that process. Right. Join me in thanking Maria for joining us and kicking off Green Connects. Yeah, thanks, Maria.